Scandal sells newspapers and what has more scandal than a sexual harassment case in a high profile company? The role of the media clouds the journey to some kind of justice either for the plaintiff or the defence. Joy D. Poor from People Plus Culture Strategies joins us in the studio to talk about this often tricky subject. Good to have you on board. You said in some notes, sexual harassment cases tap into a psyche that I think human beings have to legitimise them talking about what is otherwise an inappropriate topic of conversation. Yeah, it's a comment that I made in the context of um, the, the publicity that mm. does attach to a lot of these cases. And, and, and one has to step back and, and appreciate that, that the conduct that uh, is the subject of litigation the, these days is not new. Mm. It's been occurring in workplaces for, for many decades, if not centuries. Uh, why is it that in the face of conduct that has been occurring for so long, it still uh, attracts the level of, of media attention, indeed public interest? Mm. Uh, why is it still on the front page of papers? It, it's not as though this is behaviour that's occurring for the first time. And, and I think one has to ask oneself, uh, why is that the case? And, and my uh, speculation, and of course I'm not a, a sociologist or a psychologist, <laughs> but um, it, it is tapping into something that people are interested in talking about, and I think it, it's titillating for some mm. people. You forecast that the nature of some of these cases will change. We may see new types of cases being um, introduced or challenged in the courts. For example, an allegation that employers haven't taken reasonable steps to protect employees from harassment and the unwelcome attention, not just from staff but potentially from clients, customers or suppliers. How much have we seen of that yet? Has that been tested yet? Uh, very, very seldom and it's an area where organisations do struggle and organisations have for some time now invested fairly heavily in policies and training and things like that but it's always stopped short of them saying if we've got a big customer or a big mm -hmm. client who's uh, engaging in inappropriate behaviour that, that will actually take steps to address that behaviour with that client or customer. It's a big commercial decision for any organisation to take. But I think what we're going to see is that there will be employees who will say it's not enough and indeed it's, it's the height of hypocrisy for an organisation to say that we hold our employees accountable to certain forms of behaviour but if you're a big paying customer or client well we, we'll just let, let you do slide. whatever. Yeah. This is the, the other really cloudy part of this legislation and, and cases that have been challenged before is activity that's happening outside of work hours mm. or the workplace. How do we define harassment there? And in theory, does it mean you can't socialise with your colleagues anymore? Yeah, it's a good question and um, I guess for the past 15 years I've been uh, conducting training and, and education on this issue with, with uh, corporations from board level to, to shop floor employees and the question that gets asked Every single session is how far do these laws go? Where does the workplace start mm. and stop? Because I think people appreciate that when they're sitting at their desk or interacting with someone that they work with at work during work time, these rules are, are fine and, and they accept it. But when they're on their own time, um, particularly in, in non-metropolitan areas where you've got very tight-knit communities, people who work with each other but socialise with each other very heavily on weekends and you know, family interactions and whatever else, the boundaries are, are becoming increasingly blurred. And the practical advice that, that we have to give, certainly as legal advisors to, to, to business on an issue like this, is that take a very broad definition and interpretation of what is the workplace because even though conduct might occur strictly speaking outside of the workplace it comes back into the workplace very quickly because people don't stop talking about things that happen outside of work just because they've happened outside of work where the people that they've happened with uh, or in front of are the same people that they're working with. Mm. And, and what we see is in the social media context, for example, yes. that's where a lot of this does play out as well. What about a common question? If you've got a, a number of people who work at an organisation and they're having drinks one evening and one wants to instigate a relationship with another, um, is that okay as long as if that the second person says no that's where it ends there are some people who become almost frightened to be intimate or close to their colleagues because of some of these laws and that's a sad thing it, it, it is a sad thing um, the legislation is quite clear though it talks about the behavior is only problematic where it is unwelcome right now so to your point if someone says no then clearly the, the person who's instigating the conduct or the attention is on notice that that behavior is unwelcome if they have another go <laughs> right. uh, that's dangerous now the, as, as easy as that might seem to, to accept or explain the reality is that human interactions aren't often that simple and often a person will not indicate to a 
co-worker in explicit terms that they find the behaviour to be unwelcome. They may even participate in some forms mm. of behaviour, but later on their views about that behaviour might change. And the law doesn't stop them from changing their view. It doesn't say that just because you find X welcome means that you will find Y and Z mm. to be welcome as well. And this is where individuals, employees and, and let's face it, business are really struggling with this issue. Now the person who is harassing someone at work may not necessarily be the only target for legal action. Um, whether a management knows, other colleagues know and don't do anything about the harassment, they then become quite vulnerable to uh, legal action too, don't they? Indeed. And um, what we've seen in the last 12 months is greater focus and attention on, on board members, uh, senior management, those in leadership roles, particularly those who have responsibility for the administration of the protection. Uh, of employees. What, what um, test cases exist? Have we seen anyone actually or any organisations actually, uh, or management in organisations be hit by these laws? Well the, the David Jones case was a case where individual board members were, mm. uh, were sued. Now that was a case that, that settled um, but I think it was probably most noteworthy, leave aside the, the, the dollar value of the yes. claim, for the fact that there were individual members of a board who were very far removed yes. in a practical sense from the alleged conduct. But the allegation was that they knew or ought to have known of things occurring. And that's going to be the line of challenge that I think employers are going to need to be able to respond to. It won't be enough for employers to say in this day and age, well that's just a private matter between two of our employees. Mm. Uh, they're going to need to engage in it more actively. Just very quickly, um, what role is the media playing in the way, the way these cases are changing? Well, look, I think um, it, it is now becoming, um, sadly or otherwise, a, a part and parcel of the, the approach that's taken by uh, some litigants to utilise the, the publicity that attaches to some of these cases as a means of enhancing their, their negotiating position, recognising that very few of these cases actually ever get decided in the context mm. of, a, of, of a court case. Most of them do settle. So look, the media of course has an important role to play as far as education around these matters is concerned, but um, I, I apprehend that they will continue to be, be used more as a tool uh, in, in enhancing the leverage position of certain litigants. Joy D. Paul from People Plus Culture Strategy is always good to have you in the studio. Thanks, Great, thank Cheers. you. We're going to take a short break, but do stay with us. We'll get a take on how the budget may.